I'm Dan. And I'm Josh. And we're Yumi at Six, and this is the Kerrang! Podcast. Friends! So how are you both doing? Uh, good, I think. We've had a long summer, I think we're all pretty tired, but we're doing well. We're, like, struggling to, uh, to stay alive, but I guess we're not doing too badly. So, Tell us about yesterday. Is it yesterday you played in Leeds? Yeah. Yeah. Um, May Sage Leeds Festival yesterday. It was probably the most surreal experience of our lives. Um, I literally came on stage. I, could, I didn't even know what to say to anyone. I was just like, oh my god. So, that was the moment we could have sort of quit after that and everyone would have been happy, I guess. Yeah. It was one of those moments. So, I mean, what made it surreal was it just like the turnout for the band was it? Just a shit ton of people, and just the fact that like when we we did this thing during Save the Bedroom, and I was like, all right, I want to see, I want to try and break the world record for most crowd service and stuff. It's literally maybe about I don't know at any given time like a hundred kids in that little pit area. It's mental. Um, at one point we had like eight circle pits going on. I'm going to try the moonwalk of death today, I'm sorry. No, don't. I'm doing it, mate, I'm no, doing no, it. Please, don't. I, I did this thing on Portsmouth the other night where, uh, rather than the wall of death, uh, I asked people to do a moonwalk of death, so they all like turned away and like moonwalks. Like, it didn't really work, but I thought it looked awesome. It didn't work at all. No. Right. Less injuries, though. Yeah. Like, uh, people just ended up just running. Because <laughs> like, obviously some people are like, going, trying to go backwards, and then others like, start running and everyone's falling over. And, you know, it was funny for us. But. I liked it. So what, what prompted that? Was it like, did you see a lot of uh, injuries on the warp tour when people did walls um, of death? No, but every time I died, I did a crawl of death. I just, like, I just like that kind of spin on it. So I just thought, we're not a metal band, we're not heavy at all, so why don't I do something a bit more fun with it, you know? And take a classic uh, audience participation thing and just make it a bit more interesting and weird. A bit more MJ. A bit, a bit more MJ, yeah. yeah. I did a bit of walking on the stage myself, it was great. Oh really? Yeah. Very nice. Lovely. So, um, which band did you uh, watch last night? I watched Blink-182 yeah. last night. And uh, Blink-182 and Paramore, and that's it. It was maybe the best two hours of my life, I think. It was great. Blink played for about an hour and a half, I think. And the whole time I just sat there, side stage, just staring at Travis Barker, because he's just, he's just, I don't know, he's just so good. And you just can't help but just to watch him. Kind yeah. Of thing. It's one of those things about like <coughs> Blink, one of my favourite bands, and I thought I thought I'd have been there singing every word, like jumping around, but I wasn't. I was literally just zoned in, just like jaw on the floor. Like this guy is just amazing at what he does, kind of thing. So, yeah. so, so much respect for him. Is he one of your favourite drummers ever? Then, like, is he the one that kind of inspired you to start yeah, drumming? I, I mean, when I was like like 14 years old, I like, sort of you needed someone to look up to. Otherwise, <clears throat> otherwise I'd have probably just given up drums and he was kind of that dude for me and Blink were that band for me. The reason why I used to go home and get home from school and play drums kind of thing and probably the reason I'm in a band now. So yeah, I think a lot of people can probably say that about him and a lot of people owe it to, to Blink and to Travis especially. And the reason why they sort of uh, learnt an instrument and got into a band, so... I kind of feel like they helped kind of almost shape the scene as well. Like, if, I mean, if Blink-22 had never happened, you know that King Blue song, What If Punk Had Never Happened? Well, if Blink-22 had never happened, maybe the majority of the main stage bill wouldn't be, well, minus Thrice and a few others, but probably wouldn't be bands. Like, All Time Low wouldn't be a band, we wouldn't be a band. Okay, maybe just us two then. Yeah. Most of the city sounds, you know what I mean? They're like, it's kind of, I kind of feel like every generation has that band that then allows hundreds of other bands to pursue a career in music and I think they were that band for us in our time so big deal yeah um, so you made six for a well-oiled touring machine now you've uh, you've done warped what was it like this time around it was a lot a lot more fun yeah, um, a lot more fun had a, we made so many friends um, a, a lot of I find that just I don't know it's kind of felt like there's more people to kind of get along with whereas last year's kind of no one really around. I there was like a lot of egos last year. Yeah. Everyone sort of, everyone had their little cliques, and they only wanted to hang out with the cool bands, kind of thing. Whereas this year, you know, everyone just kind of made friends together, and everyone was yeah. hanging out and playing, playing blackjack, and you know, just playing. What's it? What's that sack game where you throw it in the hole? Oh, cornhole. Cornhole and stuff. And 
a sack game? What, what does this involve? Game? Basically, you get your ball sacks, yeah. rest them on these little planks of wood, and people try comes along and people try and throw like rocks at them and stuff, try and break them. It's like just like this piece of wood with a hole in it, and you go like 20 foot away and throw a beanbag bean bag, in yeah. there. It sounds really shit, but it's really good. Do you, do you, is there potential to win a lot of money on these games on tour? Uh, Blackjack. No, Blackjack was good. Mayday Parade kind of set up this Blackjack table for like the last four nights. And they like put, I think, three, three four hundred dollars in for like the house kind of thing. Um, and on the first night, they did really well. The next night, we took loads of their money. And then like the third and fourth, they just like, everyone was just kind of at that last day of tour kind of, I don't know, their money just, yeah, being stupid. And we were just like, just doing, but I did something crazy. What was it? I had two kings. And I, did, what, I, I doubled down on both nights, yeah, I split yeah, them. Yeah, split them, so then you just get one more card for each. Both came out as an ace. Yeah. You've got two so, blackjacks on those. So, the Jordan from every time I die nicknamed me Big Balls for the rest of the tour. He's like, oh, you got Big Balls, Big Balls. So, it's funny, That's, it's good fun, a lot more fun actually. If only he knew. If only he knew. How little and minuscule they were. So, um, later on today, uh, you're going to be helping the Kerrang! podcast by interviewing some uh, extra special bands. Yeah. Uh, without naming names, uh, have you done any kind of uh, preparation? Or are you going to be nervous? Are you going to be a wreck? I, I sent um, our press person, Phoebe, like an email being like, what am I going to ask them? Like, what do I say to them? And she was like, I'll just wing it. I'm like, well, I can't really wing it, so I'm just going to kind of, I don't know, I'm going to try and not be too much of a punisher about it and just kind of... Just ask questions that you're kind of asking us, but in, in yeah. relative to their band, I guess. It'll be fun. It's good. Yeah. So, uh, enjoy the rest of the day, and uh, we'll see you later on. Thank you very much. Good luck. Yeah, good Thanks. luck indeed. <laughs>